it's Dr. Sophia Satterwhite, founder and CEO of She Heals the World. I'm so happy that you are tuning in to today's episode to hear the top lifestyle and business tips from women entrepreneurs all around the globe. If you found this show helpful, be sure to share it with a friend. That's how our community grows. Today's guest is coming up next. Hey everybody, welcome to the She Heals the World talk show. So today I have a duo joining us, Alina and Anessa Vike. They are beauty bloggers and founders of Vike Beauty. They're going to share their journey to success with us as well as talk about what it's like to rise as an influencer. Alina and Anessa, welcome to the show. Hi, we're so excited to be here. Yes. Thank, Thank you, you for, for having, having us. us. Yeah. Oh, I'm so <laughs> happy. Yeah. So, so are you guys sisters? Can you tell the audience what's your relationship to each other? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so we actually, we're twins um, and we're super close. We literally do everything together. So we're, it was amazing starting a company together because we like are literally the same person, which is so crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is so cool working with your sister. So you have like a Tia Tamara kind of thing going. Do you know them? Oh, yes. yes. Yes, we, we love, love them. them. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> like we're very similar, but we do have differences. So it kind of like makes up for like what some what we what one might lack. So it's super like amazing working together. That is so cool. Are you guys identical? We are, we are yes. yes. Oh my god. <laughs> I it's love so this. Fun. So you are our first twin interview and this is going to be so much fun. I, you know, I think you're representing so much. You're representing that like family can do business together and like you can rise as a team. And so I can't wait to dig into how you guys got started. So please share with us how you got started with your work. Yes. Yeah, so from an early age, me and Alina, we always loved beauty. Like it was just our passion. Um, and so we started our Instagram in high school, I think. Right. Um, and so we were just always sharing like makeup tips, skincare, hair care. And that was super fun for us. So from then, like we once we got to college, we both have our finance degrees and we kind of stopped doing beauty blogging just because like everything got super serious. And we were trying to find um, like our paths in finance, which then we did get actual jobs in corporate. But we always knew we had this burning desire for beauty. So we kind of, you know, got together and we're like, let's not give up our Instagram. Let's keep blogging because it's something we truly enjoy. And then in 2019, we decided to just launch our own brand because we love business, but we also love beauty. And we kind of figured, why can we have the best of both worlds and working together? So it's been super fun. And in 2019, we won the award for CEW, Rising Influencer. So that was super huge for us. And that's exactly the year that we started our brand. Wow. So much to unpack there. That was so helpful. You know, now that, you know, you have a beautiful beauty brand that we can dig into, but you mentioned one important part, which was you launched the beauty brand after you started rising as an influencer. And so can you tell us a little bit more about that story of like what that rise was like and how you got the notoriety and prominence to be able to get the following that will support this beauty brand? Yes. Yeah, so, so when we started our Instagram, so it's like when people launch brands, like especially nowadays, like people love the founders, like they love the stories and they buy in from like what the brand represents. And when, when we started our influencing on Instagram, like we knew we wanted to cultivate a following and have like a fan base and just people who believed in us. And again, like we love giving tips, advice, and even like we used to always talk back, like going on our stories and just like answering questions. Like that was truly so enjoyable for us and I think because we were influencers and we were so much in the game of beauty like we did a lot of beauty events we met a lot of influencers like we made it was like a, it, the beauty community is really like a family and so when we launched our brand we actually got an opportunity to launch at Ipsy Ipsy is a subscription box but they also do trade shows and they were having a trade show in Manhattan and so with our contacts because we used to promote their subscription box they actually let our brand showcase there and it was super mm. huge for us because we were uh, next to brands that were in Sephora and it would just gave our brand such credibility. Okay. 
And like, we always look back and we're like, we're so grateful we started off as influencers because we really do understand and we have more connections. Like we're, it's easy for us to reach out to influencers where we see brands sometimes struggle with that. Like what is the right way to reach out to influencers? And we do a lot of panels where we talk about that kind of having the background as a business owner, but also being an influencer and like how the, we give tips on how to approach influencers. So I feel like having our beauty blog really gave us that advantage when it comes to our brand. Very cool. Very cool. And so when you were first getting this started, this new different career, like what did you think you were going to be doing? And how did you even like stumble into being an influencer? Like, was that exposed to you a lot? Was was it something that was introduced to you in school? So like, tell me a little bit more about the transition of like what you thought you'd be doing when you grew up and how you like accidentally stumbled into influencing. <laughs> Yes, that's a great question. So like it, during high school, me, my sister, um, and us and I, we always loved beauty. Like we would wear like these crazy lashes and like we would just always do our makeup every day. So we always had like that desire and passion for beauty itself. And we would always watch like YouTube videos online and we're like, oh my God, this is so great. Then we realized like, why can't we do this too? You know, like I also want to share my tips and, you know, grow a base. That's basically what we did. We launched on Instagram and we were just posting stuff. It just, it was just mostly like a passion, like a hobby where you just want to like post your tips, post products you use, give people advice, you know, what works for your skin or for your like, what beauty you want to wear or stuff like that. And um, we never, it's not like we were like, okay, we're going to become influencers. Like when we started people, Instagram just kind of came up. So we, I don't think influencer was even, even like a, a word. Yeah. I think it was like a beauty blogger. That was like the, the word to describe it. But now there's like this uh, the whole Marketing influencer up. category. Yeah. So I think for us, like we kind of got to the perfect time and like we had brands like repost our work like Anastasia Beverly Hills, who to beauty, mm-hmm. she would see our stuff. She would like it. She, they follow us. They reposted our work and you feel like, wow, it's like, this could actually be something like I could actually work with these brands. And then as we started to grow into following and, you know, we had our fan base actually trust us because it's important as an influencer to, you know, have that honest communication and trust with your audience. They actually feel you're being genuine and not just, you know, promoting products, but actually talking about things that you love. And yeah, brands started reaching out to work with us. And that's when we realized like, wow, this is actually like, you know, it's something happening. we could do. Yeah. Like this is so cool because it's like now we're actually working with brands that are in Sephora and it's just like it's like this whole new world and before that like me and my sister we always just knew that we would want to have a brand and although we did pursue our finance degrees it was just more of like a backup just in case but even when we were in school like we would always just dream about like what our brand would look like and we would always just have like these like discussions and we just finally decided to act on it in 2019 which was so rewarding like we got on Instagram and we weren't like okay like we just want to become super famous like we're like okay we're just gonna share tips and it just kind of you know we just kind of grew a base and started to work with different brands so yeah it was very like organic because we just followed our passion I think wow so so passion is like such an important driver and um it's interesting that you said that you were like working in this nine to five and still dreaming about the brand that you guys were going to create and now you're here and so I, I have a hunch that passion is a big part of why you continue to do the work that you do. But is there any other reason why you have kept going? Like, why have you been in this and why do you stay in this? Yeah, so I think it's definitely one of them being passion. And I also think that just because like, we really do love the industry, like we love creating, we love kind of like being our own boss in terms of like, like leading the brand into a vision, like taking something, taking nothing and making it into something. So to us, it's just so meaningful. And it's just so rewarding that I think that that's what we we always push forward. Also, just like our family. So we immigrated from Belarus into America. So we want to always like give like our parents are very like motivational drivers for us so it's kind of like why we just keep going and kind of like just wanting to like live this american dream basically yeah and i feel like passion is definitely being one of them and also because we did we were born in belarus we came to the united states when we we're two years old so it's just like we want to become something super great and honestly here like you're you can so it's just like that is really our force like it's something within us that we know we could get to wherever we want to be and I think it's just because there's so many hard days, you know, in, in life and in business and sometimes you just want to give up, but really like that burning desire to be something, to become something, to make your brand, your vision, it just keeps you going. It's just like, it's a burning desire for like, really. 
Mm, that is so important. And I'm sure that resonated with so many people, like having that drive and having that kind of like intrinsic motivation where there's just something within me that shows that I need to be doing this work. I want right. to build a brand. I want to build prominence. I want to build a business. Uh, but we also know that like that doesn't come easy all the time. Right. And so right. if you could look back and think about even before you started getting brand deals, because the brand deals, that was the first time that you guys started like actually bringing money into the brand. Right. right. Yeah. Right. And so what hurdles did you overcome to get to that place? So I think in terms of like just talking about influencing, starting off as an influencer, I think that like we yeah, when we first started, um, it's obviously hard because there's other beauty bloggers out there and you want to stand out. And it's it could get very discouraging like if you work really hard on a look, but then you just don't get the response you were looking for. And you're like, okay, why am I doing this? Especially in the beginning. Because in the beginning, like no one really knows you. Like maybe brands won't see your work because you're just starting out. So I think the beginning in influencing and in launching the business is the hardest part. And that's like the most crucial part where you have to keep going and you have to be very consistent. consistent yeah you have to have like almost like the self-discipline to always keep going because things nothing ever in our lives happen overnight like it may appear like that to like the public because they, they don't know but in everything like it's it's just like building blocks so you constantly are building so like with the influencing like yeah in the beginning like we would post stuff may not create lots of like traction buzz. yeah buzz but it's like the constant posting the constant talking about products just putting your passion out there and like doing it for you because it's giving you like you know that happiness I think is so important like I always say like you always want to follow something that you really want to do because if that's not something you want to do like you just want to make money you're going to give up because you know you're not going to get you're not going to start something then get paid tomorrow like it's going to take time to build so I think that that goes to the same thing for our brand as well like our brand we did have the building blocks from our, from years of influencing and years from working with other brands that you know we had the opportunity to reach out to different brand owners and ask their advice but that's also because we built that relationship so it's like, you know, it's always like you're just basically building. Yeah. And small wins are, I think, in the beginning are the greatest. I think they should always be celebrated. So even like for influencing and you got reposted by a brand, like that's a win for you because yeah. that's new people that are going to see you. So it's like always celebrate your small wins because those small wins equal to that big win. You know, it's so interesting that you started talking about wins because my next question was going to be like, what has been your greatest win after all of the work that you've put in? and how you have persevered and overcome a lot of these hurdles that you've experienced in your business. What has been your greatest win so far? So yeah, starting a business was very like such a rewarding experience for us. Um, I think that our biggest win within our our brand is when we launched at Ipsy Live because that just showed us how important all the, all the relationships we made are. And I think just launching there and then showcasing our product, Makeup Melt, and basically, because that to create that product took us a while, like we had to find the right partners, we had to think about what we want the product to be, like we had to figure out how we want to launch. So actually having that, like the opportunity to launch at Ipsy was huge for us. So that was, we celebrate that as a win because we kind of started off the brand in such a cool way where we got to build off a booth and basically had people came in, we gave out samples, like yeah, fun. people took pictures, like we got media coverage. Like that's amazing to the way to launch a brand because we weren't sure like how we were going to do it. So this opportunity presented itself and we jumped on it. So that's on the brand side and for influencing our greatest win is when we won CW Rising Influencer Award 2019. That was amazing just because it kind of showed that all like the hard work, the filming, you know, we film in our home, like it's not a studio setup, so it's not perfect. So all of that was worth it. Like all of that was kind of like recognized. So that was something that was so such a power, empowering moment just to be recognized for that. Yeah. And the CW experience like was completely, I think, like so, such a changing point because that also is the year we launched the brand. But that also is the year like we got to meet more founders. We got yeah. to have more coverage on just just us without the brand, just like who are the Vike twins. And I think just getting that award, like it was literally in front of, I would say like 3000 oh, yeah, people yeah, and people in the industry, people from L'Oreal, people from like maybe like all these big CEOs and companies, they were all there. So that was just such a, like an amazing moment. And now we actually are their brand ambassador 
ambassadors. So we are partaking and announcing the finalists for the Beauty Awards of 2021. So it's just like even like developing that relationship with them because they're such a huge and amazing organization. It's just like kind of like just flowing. So it's like taking that win, but also creating that relationship. And those are like the, our two top wins that yeah. we've all had. Those wins are huge. <laughs> <laughs> so congratulations. I hope you feel oh, so you. proud of yourself. Yeah. And I want I want to dig in deeper on the influencer award that you got um, so that we can give some of our um, audience and our listeners some tips on how they can, you know, hack becoming an influencer, because I think you painted such a beautiful picture where that the influ- being an influencer or being a leader is not necessarily just about that. Like it's about building that audience and cultivating that community so that then when you launch that thing that you want to launch, like people have an opportunity to support you. So if you were looking back, like kind of on your career and speaking to folks who are thinking about becoming an influencer, but they feel really intimidated, like the algorithm has changed nowadays. There's TikTok, there's this, there's that, there's all these different things that are kind of coming into the space now that um, can be quite challenging for for new folks. And so mm-hmm. what hacks or tips do you have for the up and comers that are thinking about becoming an influencer so that eventually they can launch their thing? Yes, that's a really great question. Um, I think the first the first step is to figure out like, what is your niche? Like, what do you want to blog about? Like kind of make it kind of super specific, just so you kind of stay on what brand you want to build. So if if that's hair, beauty, even if that's lifestyle, like, you know, interior design, it could be really anything. And I think the second thing, the most important thing is to be consistent because people want to see consistency. Like when I go on Instagram, I just, I see the people I see and like, I always know what they're doing. It could like, it's a lot of work, but I feel like when you're consistent, with your audience like they're always watching you they're always consuming you they're they're like okay what is she doing today what is he doing today you know they're always thinking because if you think about your favorite beauty bloggers you always know what they're doing because they're always posting so just being consistent and I think that it's just like starting so don't like personally for me like I'm always like oh, I'm trying to make everything perfect but I think just starting is super important even if you know when you start you're not going to have like the perfect perfect quality or like the perfect idea of where you want to go but you're still starting you're still doing something you're still making maybe catching someone's attention, you know? So I think just starting is the most important thing to, to kind of like redirect yourself into something great. So just, and keep going, always posting stories, Instagram and like posts. being open. I yeah. think that as an influencer, people have to understand that you, you are kind of inviting all these thousands <laughs> and hundreds of people into your life and you should be, you should be mentally and ready to take that on. And I think the more you share, the more people will become, I would say, obsessed with you because I know personally, like I love watching like my favorite bloggers post and they post about like their breakups, whether like personal things. And it just, I just relate and I become so in tune with them. And I think that's what really makes a person great is when they're ready to open up themselves. So people could relate to all different parts of who you are. Yeah. And I think it's also so important just to be yourself because every person is really unique and everyone is so interesting. And I feel like the people who are like successful, like they're just themselves. Like they don't try to be someone else. Like they're just themselves. And I feel like people could kind of see if like someone is not being genuine online. If, you know, just being open is so important. I feel like starting like that, like you you could build a fan base and also responding to people who write to you. Like, I feel like that's important. Definitely. Like communicating with your audience back. Like if someone comments, you know, make sure to say thank you or something like that. I feel like that goes a long way because, you know, you're creating that relationship. Mm, super helpful. Do you have any hacks as it relates to like how you guys kept yourself on schedule with creating content, like any like calendaring or posting hacks with, you know, any support around how many times to post a day or how to stay organized and create those posts. Yeah, I love that. I think that's so important because I personally have a planner. Um, I feel like when you write something down, you're kind of like it's you're setting yourself up to do it. So I feel like posting like maybe three times a week, like an actual post, but uh, uh, having story posts daily, even if it's something like, you know, you're making breakfast, you just want to post, maybe do a poll like, okay, do you guys are you guys tea or coffee people like something small, some cute so people could like kind of, you know, engage, engage with your story. Like that's important. So yeah, I feel like maybe writing it out, even if it's maybe on a calendar, if it's an actual planner, kind of write Monday, Wednesday, 
Wednesday and Friday, I'm going to do my new posts. Every day, I'm going to post some stories. Also, it's important to comment on other people's stuff, like other people within your industry, just to kind of show support back. And you never know who may see your comment and then check you out. So I think that's also super helpful. So yeah. Yeah. And one thing I would also suggest is like, even for our, so our beauty blog and our business, we have this app, it's called Preview. And I think oh, yes. Alina uses a different one, yeah. but it's basically an app where you could upload pictures and you move them around to see what would look best on your feed. So, you know, when you go on a blogger's page and like, maybe she does color theme. So that's how they uh, are successful now because they plan out their feed that might be like yeah. months ahead, but everything is nicely ordered. So if you're like, this picture doesn't really look nice to this picture, like you have a chance to move it around. Yeah. And that's like super helpful in like making your grid and your feed look how really you want nice. it to look. Yeah. I think that's, yeah, that's a great idea. If you guys could select like either to start with Instagram or TikTok nowadays, what would you start with? It's so funny because always like platforms are changing. There's new platforms coming up. Like it's <laughs> like it's a lot to keep up with. <laughs> There's always something. That is such a good question though. I... What would you that is a good question. So we have both, like, for the brand, too. We have a TikTok, like, during um, COVID okay. quarantine. Like, we kind of went full force just because TikTok was becoming very popular. So, like, let's get our brand on there. I would say, if possible, to do both. I know it's, like, a lot of work. If I was to pick one, I personally would pick Instagram just because I feel like you could write something. Like, it's more, like, bloggery as opposed to TikTok. But I would still have TikTok for, like, actual videos if I want to post. So I think I would go on TikTok. Would you? Yeah. And that's the, yeah, yeah. Uh, just because I think um, the algorithm there is a little bit more generous. It is, yes. Where, um, and I guess it also kind of depends on like your brand. So you kind of have to think about your brand. Like, are you going to be doing long videos or is it just like I'm hopping on and showing right. you how to do a lipstick hack, eyeshadow hack. But I think I would start on TikTok for like a little bit and then make an Instagram and kind of drag people from TikTok into Instagram, okay. which is okay. difficult to do. But, you know, you might obviously that that could happen because people sometimes don't switch platforms um but i feel like just because tiktok is so much more generous like they, they're point. something could go viral super easy that's true yeah i love those tips i think that gave people a lot to think about i want to hear a little bit more about your beauty brand today so like what do you guys sell who's your like ideal client give us the scoop on what this beauty brand looks like that you launched as a result of being an influencer Yes. Yeah, so as a result of being an influencer, we honestly, we used to do so many looks a day filming back and forth, trying to, you know, make sure we have enough content to post. And so we realized that we hated taking our makeup off, just like I feel like everyone in the world hates to remove their makeup. It's like a chore at the end of the night. And we realized that we really wanted to up that category. And um, we also wanted to launch our brand with something super unique, something super fun. And that's where our idea of the makeup remover spray came from. So it's a spray. You spray it all over your skin and it has skincare benefits. So we put four antioxidants into our spray. So once you remove your makeup, your skin isn't stripped, but it feels moisturized, hydrated. It doesn't irritate your eyes or your skin. And that's kind of where we wanted to launch our brand. We wanted to not only upgrade a category, but also make people look at makeup removing in a fun way. And the makeup remover spray is called Makeup Melt. And we will be launching more products um, in next year. So we're super excited for that. And really our first product today is honestly for anyone who wears makeup. We're also 100% oil free. So if you wear eyelash extensions, it's not going to hurt your lashes, which is like a huge thing. We love to wear eyelash extensions. Yeah. Um, and also because you're not pulling and tugging on your skin, you're not creating those premature wrinkles and really like the, so our bottle is 200 ml and we always have like customers and friends and family say like the bottle is so big, like it never ends. So it's $24 retail. And we are sold on our website, camera ready cosmetics and on fashion Nova. So, and we're also in some spas, but obviously that's not super accessible, but the best thing to buy is e-commerce online. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Okay. For both of you, Alina and Anessa, if you could look back and give your 10 year younger self any piece of advice, what would it be? I think for me, Anessa speaking, I think I would be, you could really do anything you want. Just like put your mind to it. And I think just start because I really believe like anything is possible. 
Um, and I'm just so grateful to, again, that my family came to the United States because I really believe that anything you want and you feel is for you is achievable. So I would tell my 10 year old self, just honestly go for it. You could achieve anything you ever even dreamed of. Like even if you think that it's not in your reach. And for me, Alina, um, I also want to piggyback off that because that's great. Um, always to believe in yourself and never to give up or doubt yourself. And that every no is always a redirection into something greater, which I really believe in that. So even if you get a no, that means there's something better and greater for you out there. So don't take that as, okay, I'm defeated. Like, no, it, it's, you're being saved for something much, much bigger better. and much better. How can our audience find and support you? So we are, um, so our brand page is called Vike Beauty and our blogger page, we're the Vike Twins and also on our website, vikebeauty.com. All right, Alina, Anessa, thank you so much for coming on the show today and sharing your beautiful story. Please support them, guys. I can't wait to have you back. Thank Thank you for having us. This is amazing. Well, there you have it. Thanks for listening to the She Heals the World talk show with Dr. S. To learn more about how to live your life by design, grab a freebie at sheheelstheworld.com forward slash freebie.